Hello, Alan. Good evening, Miss Lottie. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. A little cold, but I'm fine. Oh. And Linda, how are you? You're looking fantastic. Hello. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Right. So today we're going to talk about the town where I live. So, Alan, what is the name of the town where I live? Uh, Theta. Theta. Very good. Theta, so yes, here Theta. we <laughs> see a bird's eye view of the town or the city. It's very small. There's about 90,000 inhabitants. Um, but there always could be a few more. So here is a bird's eye view of um, where I live. <clears throat> right, so, ah, yes. Alan, yes. can you explain uh, what it says here? Um, well, hang on, I've got to just push the picture out of the way so I can read the text. Yes, it is mostly surrounded by water. You can take a ferry or a helicopter to visit the city. So you do, you you actually do refer to where you live as a city. Yes, it's called the city. Wow. <laughs> because it's an autonomous city. It has some special um, rules or regulations and it's part of Spain uh, on a, a, under autonomous rule. So wow. as we can see in this picture, I live here. And you can catch the boat from a place in the south of Spain called Algeciras. Yes. <laughs> how um how long is the island? I mean, its length and width roughly. Oh, uh, I will have to write that in the post, Alan, because I don't know it at the top of my head. But I will write it in uh, below the video. So it takes about one hour by ferry. One hour right. by ferry from Algeciras. And then uh, by helicopter from Malaga, if you fly from Malaga, it takes about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. There are no nearer airports that you can fly from than Malaga. No. Uh, wow. Well, uh, it goes from uh, Malaga to Ceuta, 20 minutes. Uh, and then if you go to mainline Spain, you've got like Algeciras in the middle and you could go to Seville or you could go to Malaga, but it would take a few hours to arrive there by car. And as you see, we are surrounded by water. Yes. Right. So off you go, Linda, and tell us something else about this place. Okay. Uh you can find many religious buildings that belong to the different cultures who live here. Church, mosque, synagogue, Hindi temple. Right. So also I put the words just in case people need to know if they're beginners. This is the church. This is the mosque, which is about um, 10 minutes from my house. This is the synagogue and this is the Hindi temple. By chance, we have more mosques than churches here. I think we have 30 mosques, Ooh, for goodness. example. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know how many churches. We could have 10 to 15, for example. And there's only one synagogue and one Hindi temple, for example. Do, do they, in other words, they cater for different religions? The, the yes. religion in the, uh, that uh, they preach in the mosque is different right. to that in the church, I assume. Yeah, so Muslims go to the mosque, Christians go to the church, Hindi people are from India, <laughs> and the Jewish people could be from anywhere in the world, really, because Jewish people uh, uh, don't really, well, they have Israel, but uh, they could be from all different uh, parts of the world, and they come here to live, for example. Wow. <laughs> Right and then. is there, sorry, I, I wanted to ask a question. Is there any other language uh, uh, spoken there? Well, of course, uh, the official language is Spanish. Then um, the Arab descendants speak uh, Darija, which is originated from Morocco. 
Then you would have uh, the Jewish people who speak Hebrew and mm -hmm. the Hindi people. Uh, I would suppose they speak Indian, but they speak English as well. So it depends on where the family uh, comes from in India, they could speak English. So the few Indian mm -hmm. people I know, their English is uh, very good because they speak it at home. And they mm -hmm. have a third language, which could be uh, Indian, for example. Okay. So uh, my students uh, speak um, different languages. So if they are from Arab descent, they would speak Darija first, Spanish second, English third, and French at school. Wow, God. So they do that. And then the Spanish children will just do Spanish and English, for example. So uh, the Arab descent uh, ha uh, use a lot of languages. They speak uh, Darija at home. So that is their first language between the family. And then when they go to school, they learn Spanish. And then while they're there, they will start with English as well. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right, so Lindy, uh, if you want to read this, Linda. Okay, uh, Corello Beach. Is it the name, Corello? Chorillo, but it doesn't matter because uh, the names are very difficult. So, okay. so Chorillo Beach. Chorillo Beach, okay. This beach is very popular in Stata. People go here to walk, swim, play, volleyball, run or go fishing. It is a place to relax and disconnect. Also, you can have a good time with your family or friends. Right. So this beach is Mediterranean. What do we mean about this? It means that the water is warmer. On the other side, uh, we have a part which is the Atlantic and the water is freezing around there. Now, just to give you an idea, in the background here, which we can't see very well, is uh, the first Moroccan village or small town, which is here. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an idea how close I can, for example, take 10 minutes to go to the border, for example, with Morocco. Mm -hmm. Oh, look here, uh, nice. Alan. Very nice. Yes. So this what is this? This is a Mediterranean park. Right. So, uh, it's like a, a man-made uh, lagoon, for want of a better word. Yes, there we are. Alan, what does it say about it? It has three big swimming pools. Inside, there are lots of restaurants and bars. Wow. It's, uh, very right. Popular. So, this is one of the swimming pools. You can see there are... Uh, some beds which are here and all you, also you can get a sunshade or a mattress to put on the sun bed and here in this swimming pool the water comes from the sea all oh, right yes so when you get into the water alan it's freezing is it <laughs> because every Monday they change the water, they take all the water out the swimming pools Isn't and it? put in clean water from the sea. Wow. So it's quite funny because when we get into the water, we're all making a noise because it's so cold. So <laughs> continue, Alan. What does it say? Oh, the water is salty and it comes from the sea. Right. Wow, why, why, why do you want to keep replacing it? Is there any reason? So it's for clean for the people because there's lots of people there. Uh, just after the pandemic, when it opened up again, oh, yes. uh, everyone is located uh, a lounger to sit on. So you would phone up, I would like to go to the swimming pool today. And they say, what number do you want? And you would say 220 and you have to go to that lounger. And that is where you would go. Wow, gosh, really? <laughs> yes. Right. right, so this is another view of another swimming pool at the Mediterranean water park. Nice. Off you go, Linda. 
one of the swimming pools has an, a an island in the middle. While you are swimming, you can listen to music or have a drink here. Right. So this is more for the younger people who want mm -hmm. to have a drink, listen to popular music, and it's noisier. So it depends what you like. You go to swimming pool one, two, or three. Uh, if we call this number one, this is the noisiest part. Then number two is a normal. And then the last one is for little children, for example. Uh, yes, yes. Right, Alan. Uh, San Amaro's Park. In this beautiful park, people have a great time. Here there are playgrounds for children, animals, monkeys, deer, birds, and sculptures. Right. And the park there's San Amaro. <laughs> San Amaro. So... As Suta is so small, land is very uh, sacred in the sense that we don't have a lot of space because there are so many yes, blocks of, of flat. So this is at the end of uh, the area and um, this is where the children can come and play. Yes. And also you can have a nice view. So here it says, this is the playground where children enjoy themselves. So it's just like a normal playground. Yes. But you have lots of trees and mountains around it. Nice. So, Linda, if you can read this little part. Okay. Also, you can have a walk while admiring the views. So, for example, this path would go up into the mountains where you would find the deers. And it's quite shady in the summer between the trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the sculptures here, no? In the mm -hmm. park of the yeah, deer. Yeah, very nice one. Mm. Now, here we go. Alan. The royal walls. The Portuguese built them in the 16th, is it 16th century? Right, so yes, because it's an X is 10, no, and the V is uh, 5 plus 1. So this is a, a view at the night time, right? So imagine through here, you can get through to the sea. And yes. if you go through here, you would come to the sea as well, a different part of the sea. Right. And this was, this was like here, this was the gateway where hundreds of years ago, people would go through here if they wanted to be, be protected by oh, the walls. Okay. So on the outside here, it was just countryside and people lived here in their little country houses. But if they felt uh, insecure, they would go through this gate and then go into the fortress to be protected. This is uh, another view oh, uh, in yes. the daytime. So this was uh, a few years ago. It wasn't so nice. And then uh, Thuta received money from Europe and they started to clean up the walls and started to protect it more. Right, Linda, would you like to read? She's had to mute uh, for one minute, she said. Okay, so you can read it, Ali. Okay, uh, the Royal Walls. This fortress is in the city center. It's a place to walk and see the panoramic view. Hundreds of years ago, it was used to defend uh, Thueta. <laughs> so, Nowadays, there are some restaurants. Hang on, I've got to just get the photographs out of the way a moment. Uh, there are restaurants here. You can ha have to try our Mediterranean food. It's great. <laughs> now, for example, by chance, this restaurant here is from a place called Galicia, which is in the north of Spain. So they do the typical food from the north of Spain, which is Galicia. And uh, they like to use seafood as part of their menu. Right, continue, Alan. Um, let me just drop the photographs down because I'm out, I'm covering the writing. As a St. Philip's Moat 
In the past, it connected the city to the countryside. You can cross it with a kayak or a small boat. Right. Uh, no, I can speak. Sorry. Right. Off you go. Linda. Okay. Mount Hasho. Hacho. Hacho Mountain. Okay. Mount Hacho. The Hacho Mountain is one in Tuta. According to the legend, Hercules pushed apart the two mountains and created a link <laughs> between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. There is a fortress on top of it. The Romans built it. The lighthouse is there too. Right. So this is a very simple explanation for everything. Nothing too heavy. And here we can see uh, the fortress on the top of yes. the mountain. And it's, as it said, it was built by the Romans. And there is a legend between Theuta and Gibraltar related to Hercules. So he's supposed to have used his strength to separate uh, the parts <laughs> because uh, before, if I remember correctly, Africa was joined to Spain uh, in one piece. And then with time, it started to separate. I suppose with the sea and the currents, that's what it is. But in legend, they said Hercules did this. Uh, over, I can't remember how many years ago, but in the Civil War, uh, Spain used this as a prison for political prisoners. And hundreds of people died there because of the bad conditions. So Spain, if you look at the history, they suffered a civil war. And during that war, um, they put the prisoners here. Uh, so Thuta was famous for the wrong idea, maybe, because of it was a prison. But it's still there, and it was a military base be after that. Now, here is the lighthouse. Oh, yes, yes. Right, in this head. lighthouse, it's manned by three families. Oh, and uh, they look after it because it's a working lighthouse. Because I don't know if you know that some lighthouses in the world are done by computer. Well, most of them are nowadays. Yes. Uh, it is one of the only ones I've heard of that is actually typically manned by a human being uh, in, in, in the lighthouse itself. Yeah. Ah. So a few years ago, before the the pandemic, I have been to the top of this. I was quite frightened when going up the steps, the stairs. <laughs> uh, but it's quite impressive to go up and you can okay. see the mirrors uh, reflecting the light. And inside the building, the furniture is uh, very old, beautifully carved furniture. Uh, but there are three families who look after the lighthouse. They take it in turns to look after it. What is on the left-hand side? Ah, oh. oh, wait a minute. Let me go back. There's something yeah. sticking up like a... a it a would be um, for the what television and communication. Oh, it's a, it's a must. Transmission. An aerial. Transmission for transmission, yeah. Oh, That's it. So here we would get uh, the television signals, maybe. Yeah. I don't know about the telephone. I'm not quite... But this is a transmission signal. And also yes. sometimes we have problems because of the mountains here. So that's what you can see. So normally people go to the top of this mountain to have a panoramic view of the area, right? So it's a place to go maybe on a Sunday. You could, people walk up here. It takes quite a few, uh, an hour or two to walk up to the top and back. It's quite good yeah. exercise, but you need to be very fit <laughs> to do it. Right, Linda, if you want to read the next one. Uh, cathedral. This cathedral, hang on, I've got to just uncover the writing. Uh, this cathedral is a place of interest because of its long history. It's a magnificent monument too. You can see many details in its structure and its two fantastic domes. 
So dome are the round parts here at the top of the towers. Uh -huh. So this isn't one of the most beautiful uh, churches in Theta. There are ones that are more um, architecturally built better, but it has a lot of history uh, related to this. That's what it was saying before. So this is the cathedral. I just remembered I was married here in this cathedral. Oh. Oh, wow. wow. I just remembered that uh, because the most beautiful church is called um, the Lady of Africa. I'm translating really? it from Spanish. Oh, wow. And it's across the road. And that is a beautiful church. Yes. Nice. And I wanted to get married in the beautiful church, the Lady of <laughs> Africa. But I wasn't allowed to get married there, but I got married here. Uh, with my husband, who was a member of the congregation. He was a member of this church. So I got married here. And I just remembered that it came to me just at the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Right, Linda, off you go. Okay. Isabel to viewpoint. From this viewpoint, you can see the whole city while you have a nice glass of Moroccan mint tea. This place is a must. Right, so this is another place. Remember, the Acho Mountain is on the other side, so people go up there to have a view where yeah. we saw before where the lighthouse was and everything. Mm -hmm. And this is on the other side, and uh, you just uh, can go up there and enjoy the view, right? Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. you do uh, a king or queen, this is Isabel II, okay? So when you do a king or queen, you change the way you say the numbers. But it's very beautiful on a sunny day. Yes. You can really enjoy it. Right. Off you go. Alan. Oh, this is a long name. Uh, Desnarigados Castle. Very good. Desnarigados Castle. <laughs> Desnarigados Castle. Desnarigado means a person with no nose in Spanish. Oh, God. It was a fortress until 1983 when it, uh, when it was turned into a museum. So it's a military museum. Ah, I see, yes. I see all so the, uh, we the have to remember thing. the history of Theta was that before uh, there was... Um, can you help me, Alan, how to say this? Uh, the young men had to do military service. So that was enlistment, maybe it's called in English, when you were obliged to do one or two years military well, yeah, national service. Well, national service, we used to call it two years compulsory. Uh, the age of 18, uh, no, was it 21? Uh, compulsory uh, two years national service, the government, right. Right. unless you had some disability or whatever. So here in Spain, that existed. And so Theta was one of the destinations for people to come and do the year or two years military service. So in Theta, there were lots of military bases before. And then maybe 10 years ago, they stopped military service. And so the bases have been closing slowly one by one because they don't need so many yeah, places. Right. So before they used to have a, like a, a lottery draw and the young men used to wait and listen where they were sent. Oh. And you could be sent to anywhere in Spain to do your military service. And people that got sent to Theta thought it was uh, not a very nice idea because uh, you would have to get the ferry and to go home, it would be a yes. big problem. So nobody used to like coming here to do their military service. Right then, so we have done a very uh, quick visit to my town, explaining very simply with not too much detail of history of that, uh, where I live. So thank you, Tell Linda. Me, what, uh, what is the main industry there? Is it the growing of olives as the same as the rest of Spain or what? No, we are 
I don't know how to say it. I was going to say, and look, we haven't got any industry or farming or any agriculture. So how um, do the men survive? What do they do? They Well, as I said before, it was a military base uh, oh, for hundreds right. and thousands of soldiers. And so the people who lived here, I'm imagining now, we offer services to these people who are uh, sent here. So, for example, if you were a family here, what do you need? You need a school, so you need teachers. So, the majority of people are civil servants here. Civil service? What, in administration of some sort? Yes, so you have, like, uh, the military. Oh. And you've got the teachers. Then you've got the government. And then we all uh, give a service one way or another. For example, my service is to give my academy to the children of the other people. So we offer services to each other. We have no industry. Uh, we have a chocolate factory. I just remembered. Oh, before. really? <laughs> yes, we have a chocolate factory. I'm on and, my way. <laughs> and um, we offer services to each other. For example, we need plumbers, electricians, no? So, oh, uh, yes, you still need tradesmen, yes. 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 So you have the military base, oh. and uh, to those people, then you give them a, a standard of living. And oh. so we need people uh, so we can live, but we don't produce anything. Is the population growing or diminishing? Uh, it's growing all the time. I just thought then, um, oh. maybe 15 years ago, what we used yeah, to have yeah, is a, a free poet. A free port meant duty-free goods. And also there were lots of bazaars. For example, we used to oh import a lot of um, things from all around the world. So people from Spain used to come here for a day trip to buy things which were cheaper. I'm talking 20 years ago. Right. So uh, Thuta was duty-free poet. Not now, but before. And so uh, luxury goods luxury items were cheaper to buy here. So people would come for a day trip on the boat and Gosh. buy clothes. Uh, we would bring things from India, from all over the world. Uh, alcohol, cheese from uh, Holland. Is so it was a very unusual thing. Control? Uh, you know, you were allowed to buy what you wanted. So oh, right. unless it was something illegal, no, there was no problem. But I'm talking <laughs> well, about 20 years ago. And then that died off. I don't know why, for whatever reason. And then mm, people don't come here shopping now. So it was a big business then. People used to come here shopping because it was cheaper. Very good. My yeah. goodness. Right. Uh, but now Maybe we are after... just... Uh, sorry? Sorry, maybe uh, it changed after uh, the Union, uh, European Union, maybe. It could be. I, I can't remember everything because if and you can imagine. Euro, Euro currency, uh, yeah, yeah, and Schengen zone. Be. Yeah. Because everyone suffered when the Euro came in, everything became more. But I think they took away our status of free port. So free port means no taxes. And then uh, there was also big business going to Morocco because they used to smuggle the goods into Morocco. It's called contraband, no? Mm -hmm. When you smuggle something into another country. Yeah. And that stopped as well. So we used to live through um, imports and exports and also uh, providing services uh, to the civil servants. So we are here like I suppose Gibraltar is, because it's uh, a good place to, uh, to be military-wise for Europe and for Spain. I think that is the bottom line, no? Yes, wow. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm surprised that this, this, um, the, the military is foremost in the, um, uh, this part where you live. I, uh, well... What, why do they want, what, what is that? They think they're going to be invaded by the Spanish or something? Or the... No, uh, <laughs> well, Europe pays uh, to stop immigration. 
because uh -huh. uh, they don't want a flood of Im immigration. Because when uh, people go to Europe, they pass through here, then they pass through Spain, and then they go to Germany or to France. So I'm just giving my personal opinion. I could be yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think the European government pay a lot of money uh, to help um, filter some of the immigration so it wouldn't be uh, flooded mm -hmm. because they can't mm -hmm. handle uh, so many. Mm -hmm. I think wow. that's what they do. But this is my personal opinion. I have no actual information, no, but it's a very sensitive subject. Uh, but I guess that is the reason. Um, and I don't know anymore. Okay, guys. So oh, we'll say, say goodbye to them. So maybe one day, Thank Alan, you, so much. <laughs> you can take a trip across the water and come and visit me when it's not so cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Welcome. Bye.